bikes that go on water, the coolest custom paint jobs you have ever seen, the best tie lever that's maybe ever been made, and reversible jerseys. There's a whole lot of new tech here at the Cycle Show in London, and I'm going to show you everything that you need to see. We have come over to Bosch because today at the Cycle Show, they are featuring their ABS system. So we're going to jump on this bike and we're going to give it a test and see how it performs. Sweet. All right, let's oh, do it. Fun. Let's go. Whee! Oh my God, here we go. <laughs> Woo -hoo! That is powerful. That is insanely powerful. Let's go again. Now I will say that test was very impressive and I think I was most impressed by just the sheer amount of power that was coming out of that front brake. And do remember, I was only using the front brake. I didn't touch the rear brake at all. So it was a very good demonstration of how it actually works. When I was on the gravel, I was only pulling on that front brake. I wasn't touching the rear at all, but it uses a very clever brain, which is down located on the fork. And what it does is that when you start braking and the ABS system is active, this takes over the, the power of the braking. Now there is a little reservoir in there, which then controls how much power is being applied to that front brake. So now you might notice that these brake rotors do look a little bit funky. And that's because they've got this black inner ring where essentially the sensor down in the brake caliper is monitoring the speed of that front rotor and you've got exactly the same thing on the rear and what the brain is doing is that it's monitoring the speeds of both wheels individually and then it applies the braking force to the front brake only to then manage how much power is being exerted and making sure that you're not locking up and then skidding out. It's a very impressive system. And actually over on the gravel, you can really see how it operates and how the caliper will bite, release, bite, release, just how it does on your car to make sure that you stay in control. Very impressive. Now this technology isn't anything crazy brand new. It has been around for a while, but it's the first time that it's been seen in kind of this configuration and more importantly, this size on a mountain bike. And it's very interesting to think, obviously we're still fairly early into ABS systems on bikes and you've got to wonder how much further can it go? Could we ever see an ABS system on a road bike? That is something that could potentially be very interesting because of course, DI2 was first seen on an e-bike seven years before it made its way over onto a road bike. So the tech that we see here could be the future for road bikes. Now, this is potentially the bike that doesn't need roads. And that's because this bike has been designed to go on water. This is called the Manta 5 SL3. And as you can see, it's made to ride the hydrofoils of the waves. So what we've got down here up front is how it balances. And then you've got your power towards the back. And essentially it does work like an e-bike. So you'll sit on top, you have to start in depths of at least two meters. And then from there, essentially you get pedaling just like an e-bike, you will then be propelled and then you sit on top of those waves and then you can ride them. Now there's a couple of different ways that you can actually use the bike. You can use it out on the open seas, meaning you could ride the waves on this bike. But the other cool thing that you can do is use it on lakes as well. So if you want something a little bit more calm, a little bit more tame, then you can take it up to the Lake District, for example, and then just cruise along on those waves. Now, another very cool thing about this bike is that the battery will actually last for up to four and a half hours of riding, which is actually quite a long time. And I don't think that anyone would be riding longer than that on water. I can imagine it's actually quite tiring. Now, these bikes are actually made by the company Manta 5 down in New Zealand. And this one here is the only one in the country. They cost between nine and 12,000 pounds here in the UK. So they're not cheap. However, if you own a yacht and you want this to be an addition to your yacht, I imagine that's not the biggest expenditure you're gonna have to worry about. I've just come over to Invani and they made something that I've never seen before, reversible jerseys. Now, let me just grab one up off the, uh, off the shelf. This one here. So as you can see, it's a normal jersey. It's got three pockets at the back, but as quickly as that, you've got another jersey, unbelievable. So they've got a whole range and you've got summer jerseys, you've got heavier weighted jerseys, you've even got gilets. It's, um, 
It's something that I've never thought of and it's really surprised me that it hasn't been done before. And they look really clean and clear, to be honest. You know, solid block colours. They're not very offensive to the eye. In fact, I'll say they look quite good. Um, but they've also got bibs. The caveat here, though, the bibs are not reversible, and that does make a lot of sense. Um, but you've got long sleeve jerseys, um, they've got arm warmers and socks and everything that you'd need. It's a really nice feeling product. The, the fabric feels premium um, and it's everything's flat locked. So you've got flat lock seams everywhere so it feels the same no matter which way round you're wearing it and then i've been told that the when the jersey when you are wearing the jerseys the pockets don't irritate you at all and the seams on the top here are still very soft so in some ways it does make a lot of sense and actually the prices on these are pretty reasonable and when you consider the fact that you're essentially getting two jerseys out of one it makes a lot of sense i'm a I believe we have reviewed these before on Cycling Weekly and we were a big fan. So I think I might need to pick up one for myself. So we've come here to the hunt stand because they've got a pretty cool custom built Mason. And this bike here is actually interesting for a couple of different reasons. It's been fitted out with the Campagnolo e-car group set, but more importantly, it has Hunt's classified wheel build. So You've got double shifting on this one by ring, which is very cool. Now, up at the hood here, you can actually see where the button is to allow you to shift on that classified hub. But of course, because classified isn't working with any group set manufacturer, you do have to come up with some pretty clever ways to make sure that you get the integration. And what they've done is here on the hood, they've actually cut the rubber hood out so that the button can poke through. It's, um, it's pretty interesting to see, bit of a gorilla bodge, some might say, but arguably it's, it's pretty clean, pretty tidy, and it does, it does work. I'll be interested to see how it works in the real world, um, but it looks like it, you just do it on your thumb which, I mean, it's fine. I think it's something you just have to get used to. If you haven't used a classified system before though, this is an entirely wireless shifter that then talks to the through axle down here on the rear hub. And then that shifts between the two different gears that sit within that classified hub. So what that does mean is that essentially you'd have two by shifting, but still being able to have the benefits of a one by ring. I'm not too sure if you need that on a gravel bike, Usually you have a pretty good spread on the gears and that's usually enough to allow you to ride wherever you want to ride. But since you do still get the benefits of a one by system and you can still have two by shifting on the rear, that is quite nice. So I think only time will tell on this one. I'm keen to try this bike out um, and see what it's actually like to use in the real world. We've just come over to Rehook because they have come out with a very nifty little tool. Now, you might know Rehook from their chain put back on a tool, which they then morphed into a bit more of a multi-tool. But they've, they've released this, which is called the Tire Glider. And this is essentially made to help you put on and take off tires. And I was pretty keen to see how this would actually work. So I've got a wheel here deep section carbon wheel with a GP5000 on it, which is known to be a pretty tight tire. Now, what you do is, you open it up, literally pop this in, go around by 90 degrees, and then you just start pushing. And then it's a bit tight to start with, but as soon as you've got a little bit off, it becomes really easy. And there is an inner tube in here as well. So there is something taking up the space. Um, now, when you want to come to put the tire back on, you use a slightly different part of the tool. You get it on partially, pop it onto the edge of the rim, and then you just start pushing it around. And there you go. It's putting the tire back on. And then we all know that that last bit is always the hardest. Um, and I think if I keep pushing, it will start to chase it off the rim on the other side. But if I grab hold up here and then push really hard, should just pop back on. That was actually quite easy to do. You do have to put your weight through it at the end. Quite impressive actually, this little tool. I think only time will tell what this is really like because I think with tools like this, you really need to use them on a whole lot of different wheel and tire combinations to see how they really last, but pretty cool. So we've come to this collection of custom bikes that's here in the middle of the show. And one that absolutely does stand out is this hand sling. And I don't think I need to describe too much why it does stand out, but my key favorite things about this have got to be those parkour wheels. They are absolutely gorgeous. The, um, 
the light. When the light hits them, they just absolutely sparkle. And I'm led to believe that these are the only set of these wheels in the world finished in this way. And they are they're absolutely gorgeous. I also love the bar tape and the saddle. They match perfectly. And then with that paint as well, it's, um, I can only imagine that in the sunlight, this thing absolutely pops. Now this bike next to me is one from Quirk Cycles and it's one that's been around for a little while. We actually filmed it back at Bespoke at the end of last year, but it's one bike that whenever I look at it, I just think it's the most beautiful thing in the world. I love the paint on it. I love the joints here and the, uh, the lugs that have been used because you end up with this beautifully seamless finish and it's made with Columbus steel tubing, but Looking at it, it's just so incredibly modern but pays so much homage to how bikes used to be made. And it's, um, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous thing. This is honestly probably one of my bucket list bikes because it is, it's just stunning. Now, the last bike that I'm going to highlight here is this DV8. Now, DV8 are actually a Scottish brand and the attention to detail on this bike is honestly mind-blowing. There's gold leaf, there's hand-painted details of the leaves and the trees and the grass, and then you've got these incredible fades in the sky. And it's not just the frame, but it's the fork as well. And everything that's been done has just been done to perfection it really is this really is a work of art i've spoken to someone who actually works with dv8 and the intention behind this bike is that it is still going to be ridden which i find incredible i don't think i could have a bike like this and then want to go and ride it but this thing really is absolutely stunning the paintwork is one thing and by far and away takes your breath away but also the spec of the bike itself it's just been thought through incredibly well now Mountain bikes aren't my thing, but this thing is honestly absolutely gorgeous. So that's all for today here at the Cycle Show. Let me know down in the comments what you think of all the new tech I was able to see here today. And also, let me know what your thoughts are on ABS and if you think that it could ever make its way onto a road bike. If you enjoyed the video, then please do drop it a like, subscribe to the channel for more content, and I will see you again very soon.